Big Subaru. If you need another reason, how about the Bay Area's best cup of coffee? Come and talk to our Subaristas at the Wilderness Cafe. Whether you're looking to buy a new or certified pre-owned Subaru, service your car, or just looking for your new favorite cup of coffee, Stevens Creek Subaru is the Bay Area's preferred destination. Are you need to find on Stevens Creek Boulevard, just off of Winchester, near Santana Row in San Jose, or StevensCreekSubaru.com. That's StevensCreekSubaru.com. And remember, and drive safely. Planet Navigator. 
navigation. Yeah, something like that with a high. It changes the orbit of that asteroid just a little bit. But that little bit, if you get it early enough, is just enough to push it off away from a force that's going to impact the Earth. The goal is to use the DART spaceship to defend this planet from potentially deadly space rocks in the future. Bank of England says it's monitoring the markets very closely after the pound hit a record low against the dollar today. Dow down 114. This is CBS News. Liberty Mutual customizes your car and home insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Visit LibertyMutual.com to learn more. It's 9.03 at the Bay Area's news station KCBS. Mostly sunny skies expected throughout the afternoon today with mild to hot temperatures. Good morning, I'm Melissa Colross, and here's what's happening. Caltrans is beginning the second phase of its cleanup. CBS reporter Matt Bigler joins us live from the scene with an update. Melissa, I'm under the 880 overpasses right now, and a small army of cleanup workers wearing yellow vests is scooping up debris, garbage, all kinds of refuse. You might be able to hear them behind me. They're putting it into bags. This is the beginning of, as you mentioned, phase two of this massive cleanup operation. Uh, in addition to the workers, they've been lifting vehicles on forklifts and moving them out of the Now, at the same time, there is a resistance that is starting to form. I'm walking now over to the Cobb on Wood encampment, which is, uh, I would describe them as miniature hobbit houses. And I've been talking to Danny Kay. Uh, she's doing another interview right now. Um, but she is in sort of a, a wheelchair walker. It's a walker with wheels. And she says she's not leaving. There's a perimeter forming around these houses. And she is one of several people who say they're staying put. Maybe some sort of confrontation with Caltrans workers later today. We're not exactly sure at what point. Uh, I've talked to Caltrans and they say that they're going to move their way from one end of this phase two area to the other. And if they meet resistance, then the CHP is also on hand to make arrests. There were two arrests during phase one. We'll see what happens during phase two. Live from the scene in uh, Oakland, Matt Bigler, KCBS. Thank you, Matt. And of course, staying with KCBS, we will continue checking in with Matt throughout the morning. Well, it just got harder to sell stolen catalytic converters. KCBS reporter Holly Klon tells us the governor has signed a bill requiring recyclers to keep meticulous records and only buy from the legal owner of cars. Maybe it's happened to you. It's very likely to have happened to someone you know. Go out, start your car, and the catalytic converter is missing. It's part of that exhaust system on your car, and it's full of valuable materials that thieves out to unscrupulous brokers. By some studies, catalytic converter theft has increased from tenfold, 10x, just since 2018. Governor Gavin Newsom signing a bill that requires scrap metal recyclers to show they're dealing with legit owners of parts. Sellers have to show they know which vehicles the parts came from. You take away the market for stolen goods, you can help cut down on stealing. It's not much more complicated than that. It's just another way, just another example of how we're leaning in to reduce crime in this state and keep Californians safe. The governor also vetoed a bill that would have made kindergarten mandatory, saying it would cost the state $268 million, money that hasn't been budgeted for the coming year. Expect to see a lot of action coming out of the governor's office this week, as he has until Friday to decide on bills passed in the legislature. All the Kwan KCBS. Governor Newsom said again this weekend he has no plans to run for president in 2024, there are plenty of political insiders who just frankly don't believe him. We get the story from KCBS reporter Jeffrey Shaw. It was at the Texas Tribune Festival in Austin. Featured speaker, California's governor. Topic number one, will he or won't he? No. 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 I said it in French, Italian. Mm -hmm. I don't know German. I mean, I cannot say it enough. But thank you. It's humbling and it's sweet. I mean it, and I never trust politicians, so I get why I keep asking. Houston went on to excoriate Governors Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis of Texas and Florida, respectively. He'd already challenged DeSantis to a debate. Republican political consultant Mike Madrid says if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, well... I don't think that there's any other reason that a politician in the middle of a contested race in his own state is both spending money and attending events outside of the state. Um, would be doing that. Give me a few positioning for a possible.
number one for president. President Biden has said he has not yet decided whether to run for re-election in 2024. Jeffrey Shaw, the case, CBS. Coming up in just about 15 minutes on Ask an Expert, we'll talk with UCSF's Dr. Peter Chin Hong about whether we're becoming a little bit too complacent when it comes to COVID or whether we're right where we should be as the pandemic moves into endemic stage. That's at about 9.20, and if you've got questions for the doctor, send them to us at askus at kcbsradio.com. That's askus at kcbsradio.com. Just ahead on KCBS, whether uh, flight attendants are hitting the picket lines or soon will.
Meanwhile, flight attendants for Southwest Airlines are set to take to the picket line tomorrow. KCBS's Jennifer Hodges reports that.